First, I would like to go through some of the important regulations and policies came out in 2010. The first regulation is Foreign Invested RMB Fund. This January, State AIC issued a new regulation on the registration of foreign invested partnership enterprise. This new regulation turns on a green light for direct foreign investment participation in RMB funds. So foreign investors can directly invest as a G, either a GP or LP in RMB funds. The next important regulation in terms of real estate investment is insurance fund invested in real estate. In September of this year, CIRC issued another rule allow, allow insurance fund invested in real estate. So insurance funds are permitted to invest, to be invested in retail, office, property of insurance related business sectors, property for self-use, but they are prohibited to be invested in residential properties and real estate developments. CIRC also set some financial strength criteria for insurance company investing in real estate. For instance, solvency ratio shall not be less than 150%. The company must be profitable and the net assets of the company shall not be less than 100 million RMB. Second regulation is regarding anti-tax evasion. As you are aware, there are a couple of ways for foreign investors to exit from its investment in China. If the holding company is a non-PRC resident, generally speaking, it does not need to pay capital gain tax in China. But this situation was changed by a new, by a new circular released by the Tax Bureau at the end of 2009. The third regulation is targeting at a rapidly rising housing market. In terms of land supply, government take actions cracking down land stocking, shorten the term for land grant payment, and reform the bidding system. Government also changed the business tax exemption period in relation to transfer of property and set a minimum withholding ratio of land value added tax for developers the regulations which are expected to come out in the near future. So the first one is introduction of property tax. The idea of property tax reform is to abolish tax benefits for residential properties. The target of property tax will include villas, high-end high residential properties, and the tax rate will land in between 0.3% to 0.4%. And the value and the market value of the real property will be used as a tax base instead of the original book value. The second regulation which may come out soon is the amendment of dismantlement regulations. This January, the State Council published a draft of the dismantle regulation for public review and comments. So under the Chinese property law, Compulsory dismantlement is a government privilege and can be only conducted for public interest. So the main controversial issue in the amendment of the, reg of the dismantle re dismantlement regulation is how to define public interest. The landscape of legal environment in China is changing. It is important for industry and the business people to be the driving force of such change. One of the effective ways to be the driving force is to be involved in the process of formulating legislation and the policies. Basically, uh, if any foreign investment, uh, foreign investor want to do a business in China, the first thing you have to do is to set up an uh, onshore entity. Uh, so the onshore entity will allow you to, to invest, to develop, uh, to, to own and operate uh, uh, real properties in China, except for the, uh, for the real property uh, held for self-use. But again, you know, because of the ever-changing environment, today I read the news is that uh, Chinese government probably were prohibiting uh, any 
foreign company to buy residential housing in China. I don't know whether it's true or not, but this is in uh, today's news. Then, of course, the approval for set up a foreign investor real estate company will be uh, granted if the investor has obtained the land use rights or uh, the building ownership or has entered into a uh, sales and purchase agreement to ob obtain such rights or ownership. So this is the first step. But sadly, the foreign debt is uh, not allowed uh, uh, since uh, three years ago. So basically, all the money going to invest in China in real estate sector has to be equity. Um, there is also a minimum uh, capital requirement uh, for an investment over 10 million or so. Uh, basically, you can leverage only up to uh, 50%. The capital re repatriation is, uh, is something that uh, I think is the, the channel is quite limited. Uh, there's only two ways of getting the money out. First is the dividend uh, is the most feasible way. And in practical, basically, it's very difficult to pay dividend more than once a, a year. So this is uh, something uh, very practical um, for, for the investors to think about it. So, you know, although there are laws and regulations are clearly defined, but the actual implementation can be very difficult, uh, particularly when a lot of investors now are focusing on the second tier cities. Because some, in some of the cities, you are the, probably the first foreign investor in the, in the real estate sector, and the local government may not know what to do with it. In those investments that you need to set up a company, you really have to think it through before you enter into agreement, you know, depending on your own execution capability to see how quickly that you can get things done or how difficult the local authority is. So the key factors you know, uh, about how to execute a deal uh, in, in China. First of all, I think rich local, res local resources and uh, a good government relationship will help. Uh, we have to leverage a lot of uh, group's resources, uh, particularly if you're in a, in a new city. And of course, the in-depth understanding of the local market, policy, and a legal environment is really important. Ability to raise onshore financing is a key. Given that there's a very limited sort, uh, a channel for uh, capital uh, repatriation, so a strong project execution capability is needed for, uh, for, for your investment in China. Um, then you know, it has to be supported by professional teams with local knowledge and, of course, international experience. But, there is a way out. You know, alternatively, you can work with uh, a partner in China uh, for, for, your, for your investments. It could be a local developer. It could be a, uh, you know, funds like us, or it could be uh, a, 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 another investor who is very familiar with the uh, Chinese environment. So when we summarize uh, this, uh, this uh, criteria for how to select a, uh, a good partner, uh, it has to be uh, a credible partner that's supported by very good, good brand and uh, most importantly, reputation, strong track record, you know, doing things, and of course, transparency. I had to imagine that a lot of you are thinking, you, you know, this, this is a very Byzantine, a very complex procedure right here. Are there any alternatives to this, this very complex woofy structure? And the answer is yes, but they're few and far in between, at least to my experience. Um, when it comes to private equity, there's a structure out there that came, uh, came into being about uh, a year or so ago called the Sina structure. And this is what I would call really uh, synthetic ownership. Um, you essentially have an offshore holding company that acquires a domestic company through a number of uh, contractual arrangements um, rather than owning uh, a direct majority equity stake. Um, and to my knowledge, there is no MOFCOM approval for this type of a, a transaction. But uh, as I also understand, it's not yet fully scrutinized, so there's no telling what's going to happen. The disadvantages here is that um, uh, the lack of direct equity ownership could be perceived as allowing a foreign invested entity to circumvent uh, the limitations on restricted industries, which would be a real no-no. Um, the agreements that are between the offshore holding company and the target company um, also sort of provide for a difficult exit. It's hard to capture the economic benefit at the end of the day if all you have is agreement. There needs to be um, 
an event like an IPO. And when it comes to real estate, um, really the, uh, the most familiar uh, alternative to the Wolfie structure is what we all really know very well. Um, and the most obvious alternative is um, the JV partnership. It's um, a traditional structure whereby a financial partner offshore, presumably with a lot of capital, uh, bonds with uh, a, um, a partner onshore who has a lot of property to develop. The JV partnership uh, allows for dividends and shares and representation on board of directors. These are all allocated on a proportional basis um, to the registered capital. The disadvantages here for a JV partner are, again, what you might expect. Everybody on the board really has to agree. And if you don't agree and you have to change the structure of the JV, you really have to go back and get government approval or very high level approval, which takes time and obviously costs a lot of money. Um, and lastly, as in all JVs, you, you run the obvious risk of, of board members being very corporate-centric and less uh, good JV citizens. Uh, I think today we have actually heard a lot about the, um, the procedures and technical uh, uh, um, consideration in getting uh, uh, foreign investment into China done. Uh, I, today I'm going to share with you, uh, it's less technical, it's uh, our story in China. The reason why obviously we invest in China is very simple because we see China has a huge population and China is, uh, um, has proven that uh, could generate sustainable growth. Um, so in the past, obviously we, we, a few years ago, we also, we, everybody is also just focusing on, oh, just GDP growth. You see there's a lot of export driven and uh, it's proven to be a double digit growth. And of course, uh, some people will say that it should be more than that because uh, some of the GDP is not really counted, uh, uh, accounted for uh, because there is a, a huge uh, a gray economy uh, in, in, in the market. According to statistics, of course, this GDP growth will be uh, will still be very strong, we will still be sustainable, but this time the government is hoping to shift from the export orientated uh, dr driven uh, effect, uh, uh, driving force to more domestic consumption. According to the next five year plan, um, the government will put much em more emphasis uh, on this domestic consumption. Uh, uh, reason, of course, uh, after the 2008 financial crisis, the government realized that they should try to shift the reliance on the, uh, the, the growth um, uh, force from the export to uh, domestic uh, consumption driven. Uh, we've seen uh, the minimum wage in the, a lot of coastal cities actually has risen in a very substantial uh, uh, growth rate in the past year. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, the government is trying to improve the social security. One of the reasons is actually to increase the disposable income of individuals, because the saving rate in China is very, very high. So uh, the in fact, the government is trying to encourage people to spend. We have actually done a lot of projects in the second and third tier cities, uh, uh, ho a mass domestic housing uh, uh, market. Um, Again, uh, the reason why uh, we did it, uh, in fact, we did it and we started to do it in the 2007, is because we have seen a the, the trend of urbanization. Uh, uh, there will be more and more people uh, migrating into second tier cities. Why, why they're not going to the tier one cities? It's because tier one city is too expensive. Um, if they, and also the, uh, uh, the tier one cities like Beijing and Shanghai, you can see a lot of traffic jam. Uh, the, the, the healthcare system is up to the upper limit right now. Uh, it is uh, the, the quality of life for people actually moving to tier city is actually it's not that, that high for new immigrants because uh, obviously they're not in a high earning sector, so they wouldn't enjoy the sort of sophistication offered by the tier one cities in, the, in a higher level. The China, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, 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 infrastructure investment, including building up one of the, the longest uh, 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 high-speed uh, high railway system in the world. Obviously, that will actually uh, improve the, the working efficiency uh, uh, tremendously. Um, of course, that's, uh, that's representing uh, opportunities for a lot of business, uh, new business op uh, activities. The other sector that we see, uh, we encourage our investors to look at, is actually the, the retail market in the, um, in the second tier cities. Reason, 
because uh, the in improvement in the household disposable household income, household income, and also the government direction to improve domestic consumptions. And most importantly, you see more luxury goods and luxury brands are actually moving into second tier cities. Rising, rising in the disposable income, robust uh, countries' uh, retail sales demand uh, more than retail space. What if? Well, actually, the first tier city. Looking back, the first tier cities. The prime. We're also running out of prime retail land, and the demand of shopping mall in uh, in second tiers will emerge, and they will remain strong for the next decade. Or despite all these uh, difficulties in getting the 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 movie set up, getting the money into exit, and this and that. But still, um, the reason why we're here is because we always uh, want to find. Um, the right opportunities, um, the opportunities with good return, good uh, uh, and the potential. Of course, we have to strike a balance between the risk and return. But uh, we have done it before, and I'm sure uh, um, with the right team, with the right strategies, and uh, a good implementation, and taking a, I would say, not a really short-term view, but actually a medium to long-term view by uh, growing your business, uh, getting the right people, setting up a team. Getting uh, right with the it's, it's a policy-driven market. So if you ride with the policy, with the government direction, uh, I'm sure um, there's a lot of opportunities in different sectors in the market in the next two decades for everyone to uh, to capture. Thank you.